Today's video is actually a request by one of my regular YouTube viewers whose name on YouTube is Andrew Rude. Now, Andrew asked me a question if I could do a video that is talking about how to tell what key you're in in a piece of music simply by looking at the key signature, you know, the one with the sharps or the flats on it. And I actually hadn't done a video on that yet, so I figured it would be an excellent time to do a video based on Andrew Rude's suggestion. And so that is what today's video is going to be on. Now, I wanted to make a couple of notes, and even though, and one of them is that even though for all of the keys with the sharps and all of the keys with the flats, even though the method for determining what key you're in for each key signature is basically the same, I I figured I'd just walk you through all of the keys in uh, that have sharps and all of the keys that have flats, even though the method for determining what key you're in is the same, simply so that I could show you what the key signature for all the keys looks like and so that you could become more familiar with it, and also just to give you a real life example of how some of that would work. And another thing I wanted to note before we get started here is that the book I'm using to show you the key signatures is actually a scale practice book that you might recognize from my scale teaching videos if you've seen those. And above each uh, key, it has the name of the key, which is something you will not see in normal music. If I open up one of these books, let's go here with Bach and let's look at something from the Well-Tempered Clavier. If I take a look at one of these pieces, here's the beginning. Uh, it is in the key of B flat major, and it does not say what key it's in. You'll just have to know that by looking at the key signature. So that's just something I wanted to point out, that normal music will not have the name of the key written above the staff. You will know what key you're in simply by looking at the key signature. But with that out of the way, let's get started, and let's start off with C major and work our way up from there. So let's take a look here at the sheet music for the key of C major. Now, as you can see here, we have a treble clef as well as a bass clef in the right hand and the left hand. We also have a time signature here. And in this case, we are in the time signature of 2-4, which basically means there are two beats per measure and the quarter note gets the beat. And if you look here at the first measure, you can see that we have four eighth notes because two eighth notes equals one quarter note. So basically, we have beats beat one, which is those two, and then beat two, which is those two. Now, as you can see here with C major, we don't have a, time, a key signature, and that's because C major has no sharps and flats. C major is probably the easiest key to understand, but I just wanted to briefly go over it. C major has no sharps and no flats in the key signature, so when you're playing C major, you're going to want to play all the white notes on the keyboard. So now let's take a look at G major, and as you can see here, the main thing that's different from C major is we now have a single sharp here, which is F sharp. And F sharp is the first uh, sharp that's going to be brought in when you're going around the circle of fifths, and as I just said, it is F sharp. Now the way to tell that you're in G major when you simply have one sharp is, well, and for the very first few uh, keys, you'd probably just easily be able to remember that one sharp is G major, two sharps is D major, etc. But there is a rule when looking at sharps, and that rule is you look at the last sharp in the key signature, and then you go one half step up from that sharp. So if we hear at F sharp, uh, which is the last and only key, uh, last and only sharp in the key of G major, if we go one half step up from F sharp, we end up at G, which of course is the key signature we're in. So that proves to us that we are in the key of G major. But as I said, it's pretty easy to remember that one sharp is G major. So now let's take a look at D major, and as you can see here, now we have two sharps. Not only do we have an F sharp, but we also have a C sharp as well. Now, as I said before, this one is pretty easy to remember since we only have two sharps, and it's quite easy to remember that two sharps equals D major. But just in case you want to see more proof of that uh, method of finding the key by looking at the key signature, if we look here at the last sharp, which is C sharp, and we go one half step above C sharp, we will end up at D, which is the key signature that we're in, and that is how you find the key by looking at the key signature. So now let's take a look at the key of A major, and as you can see now we have three sharps. We have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So if we take a look at G sharp and we go one half step up from G sharp, we will come to A, and that is how we know that we are in the key of A major. And once again, since we only have three sharps here, that also is pretty easy to remember. So you can also remember simply by looking at the key signature and knowing, okay, there's three sharps here, so we're in the key of A major. So now let's take a look at E major. As you can see, now we have four sharps. And once again, at this point, you probably could be able to still remember that four sharps equals E major. But if we take a look at the last sharp, which is now D sharp, so we have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. The last sharp here is D sharp. So if we take a look at that and we go one half step up from D sharp, we then come to E and we know we're in the key of E major. 
So now let's take a look at B major. And by this point, we're starting to kind of get into that territory of where you'd actually have to start looking at the last note and then going up a half step from there to know what key signature you're in. You could probably still remember the look of five sharps and know that five sharps ha is uh, B major. But uh, probably from this point on, you'd probably want to just look at the last uh, key signature or the last sharp in the key signature to know what key you're in. So if we take a look here at the five sharps, we have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and then now we have uh, a sharp. And so if we take a look at A sharp and we go one half step up from A sharp, we then come to B and we know we're in the key of B major. So now let's take a look at F sharp major. As you can see here, now we have an absolute cluster of uh, sharps here at the key signature. So at this point, you'd probably want to actually look at the last sharp and then go up a half step because looking at this and remembering that shape and associating it with F sharp major might get kind of difficult. So what you'd want to do here is look at the last sharp here, which is E sharp, which is basically the same as F. And then you'd want to go up one half step from F which is F sharp, and that is how we know that we are in the key of F sharp major. Once again, that's E sharp, but technically E sharp is the note of F. So one half step from F is F sharp, and that's how you know you're in the key of F sharp major. So our last key signature here with sharps is going to be C sharp major. And as you can see, we have a lot of sharps. We have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and finally we have B sharp, which similar to E sharp is actually the same as the note of C on the piano. So if we go up one half step up from C or B sharp, we will arrive at C sharp, and that's how we know that we're in the key of C sharp major. So now let's move on to the flat keys, which we'll start off with F major. So here we are at the first key signature on our list that has a flat in it. And as you can see by the title here, we are now in the key of F major. Now F major, kind of like C major, is one of these ones that you'll simply have to remember because while there is a rule with flat keys to tell what um, key signature you're in by looking at the order of flats, with F major, we only have one flat, and we don't have enough flats to be able to use that rule, which is by looking at the second to last flat in the key signature. So basically, the rule, as I just said, is looking at the second to last flat. But if we look here, our flat is B flat, and our key signature is F major. So F major, you're just going to have to remember one flat is F major. It's a rather simple scale, and that's just one you're going to have to remember. So B flat major is up next. As you can see, we have B flat and now we have E flat. And this here is where that rule starts to come in place. Now you could easily remember this by simply knowing that two flats equals B flat major, but you can also look at the second to last flat, which in this case is the first flat in the key signature, which is B flat. And we are in the key of B flat major. So looking at the second to last flat tells us what the key signature is. So let's look at E flat major here, which is the next one on our list, which now has three flats. As you can see, we have B flat, we have E flat, and now we also have A flat. Now, if you remember, the rule with flat keys is to look at the second to last flat in the order of flats. So if we look at the second to last one, which here is E flat, well, that tells us that we're in the key of E flat major. So here we have the key of A flat major, and now we have four flats. We have B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. And if we look at the second to last flat, it's A flat, and that's how we know we're in the key of A flat major. So here we have D flat major, the next one up on our list. And now, as you can see, we have five flats. We have B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and now we have a G flat. But as you just heard there, the second to last flat was D flat, and that's how we know we're in the key of D flat major. Now let's move on to the key of G flat major, and now we have six flats here. As you can see, we have B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and then we also have C flat. So basically, we look at the second to last flat, which is G flat major, and that's how we know we're in the key of G flat major. The final key here on our list with flats is C flat major. And as you can see here, now we have seven flats. We've got B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and then finally we have F flat. So if we take a look at the second to last flat, it's C flat major, and that's how we know we're in the key of C flat major. So hopefully you enjoyed this video on how to tell what key you're in in a piece of music simply by looking at the key signature. And once again, thank you to Andrew Rood for leaving that suggestion. Like I said earlier, I completely forgot to do that video and it was a, it's a really good idea of a video to do. So hopefully it helps some of you beginning pianists out there and it can teach you and make you a better pianist. Now, one thing I wanted to mention about the key signatures is that there are actually little, I think the technical word to use is anagrams to use for each uh, 
key signature. And that's basically where you take each letter of the key signature and you kind of turn it into a word to help you remember what the order of the sharps and flats is. So for example, for the flats, which is B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and F flat, instead of having to remember all of that, you can think of a simple little uh, phrase, which the one I grew up with learning on the piano is bead, which is the first four flats, and then gum candy fruit. So that's just how you kind of how you can remember the order of flats. And then for the order of sharps, I've heard like a million different versions for it. Uh, one I often hear is fat cats go down alleys eating bologna, or bologna, I think that's actually how it's pronounced. And uh, that's just one way you can remember the order of sharps, but there's a million different ways you can come up with any one you want or just use one someone else's use. But I just wanted to mention that because I forgot to mention it when I was looking at the sheet music, but that's one way you can remember the order of sharps as well as the order of flats. Just come up with a simple little funny thing to talk about. I've heard a million different variations on all of them, so I just wanted to mention that. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to tell the key you're in in a piece of music. And if you want to go check out my scale tutorials or the, uh, the videos where I teach uh, simple Bach music or even some of my piano reviews uh, where I play some really awesome keyboard instruments including organs and harpsichords and all kinds of really neat things like that, make sure to go check that out. And if you want, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you do subscribe, make sure to also hit the bell notification button so that you can be notified of all of my future uploads, whether they're tutorials or piano reviews or anything you might be into. So if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.